and uh, we shall be moving on from where we left last week. We started on this series on how to excel in your exams. We did two tips last week and today we are moving to that third tip. And just a reminder, if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, consider subscribing, kindly do, because uh, you will be getting notifications whenever we upload others and we have lots of videos there that will be able to help you in so many other ways in your personal development otherwise we move on and uh, today we are moving to tip number three which is syllabus and what does this entail you've got to cover and establish the syllabus get to know what will be set or what can be set what uh, information are you supposed to have what uh, what from which books from what area to what area people usually have various uh, coverage or various topics that they need to cover depending on which level they are for example in class 8 uh, mostly class uh, 8 uh, the national examination kcpe starts from class 5 up to class 8 that is uh, uh, four years, five, six, seven, and eight. And the same thing goes for form four, which is form one, two, three, and four. But now you could be in class form two, you could be in class seven, or somebody is in first year in the university. Always get to know what are you required to have learned by the end of that particular uh, period of time or by that particular course. The moment you've known what they are, and some people don't take this seriously, some people don't get to find out, and that becomes the first problem, because you cannot pass uh, if you do not know what is going to be set, or where the exam is going to come from. So, the moment you've known what you need to cover, start doing it. Cover the syllabus. This is not a, a, a school uh, responsibility. This is not a responsibility for your teacher or parent or somebody else or your guardian. This is your personal responsibility because you are the one who is going to set the exams. If you do not cover the syllabus, you're not going to blame anybody. And remember last week we said we avoid excuses. Everything that is going to happen, we take a hundred percent responsibility. So when you fail, it is not somebody else who's failed, it's you, and it will haunt you throughout your life. You will always remember that you failed that particular exam. If you pass, you will celebrate it throughout your life. So, it is not somebody else who is going to take responsibility for you. So, you cannot say that we did not have teachers, or our teacher did not finish. It is you to ensure you finish the syllabus, whatever it takes. Whether you're going to borrow books to read, remember last week we also discussed about resources. You need to know what resources you have at your disposal. So this is the time you need to know, okay, I'm supposed to cover these particular books, and where do I get them? You look for them, read them. And uh, an example is, uh, when I was going to do Form 4 exams, I did not finish the Kiswahili syllabus. I finished all the other subjects, I would sit with them, I would pick book one to book four, whether it's uh, commerce, our time we were doing commerce, uh, uh, others would do economics or uh, accounting, others would do different subjects, we had many subjects, so business studies was not just business studies, it was divided into three. I would sit with book one, two, three, and four, remember I was covering the whole secondary syllabus in form four. And I had to read all of them and study them. You see, that is what makes you a student. Then uh, I pick another book, say English, and I go through it. I pick physics, go through it. We did not have teachers, I think I mentioned this. And uh, most of us, we had to take the initiative. We would even teach our own fellow classmates. You go read a subject and then you go teach. You see, and that helps you to even understand it better. So, take responsibility. It doesn't matter whether you have teachers, whether you're in Northeastern, wherever you are, it doesn't matter. You're the one sitting the exam and ensure you know what is going to be said. Sit with it down and cover it. You see, in uh, Form 1, I got to Form 1 and after being 
used to very large volumes of reading. For one, it was very simple. Just one book. Just one exercise book or something. And I would sit, read it, and I pass everything. And uh, I know that if you haven't read something, you have less chance passing it. Now, this is my formula of how to read for your exam. First is to just go through the syllabus. If it is history, if it is social studies, whatever it is, or English, just read to finish. Just read so that you have an idea. I would just read just to have an idea. So that is just first reading. Yeah. Uh, so that even if um, I run out of time, there is nothing that will come that I never heard about. At least I've had an idea. I've heard about it. And then the second reading now, I read to study. I go sometimes to just various sections and read. I read every bit just to study and understand. You see, this is now the second reading. For many people, they wait for these things to be taught in class. If you're a good student, by the time they're teaching it in class, you will be revising it. That will be your time to revise. Because they are, you are now revising with the teacher. But you had gone through it because you already know the syllabus. At the beginning of the term or the semester or whichever the period you're using, you establish the syllabus and you start covering it and you read ahead. So when people are doing it in class, it's your time to revise. You're already revising. And then the last bit of reading, that is the first reading, you just pass through reading to finish. Second one, now you're digesting it and studying it, trying to get that concept. And if it is something that is, for example, history or geography or whatever it is, I can read and then have a look at some of the questions at the end of that chapter or I look for uh, some exam papers, past exam papers, just to see how the topic is set. If it is maths, I do it to understand it now. I try to solve the problem. And then the third one, I read, when I'm reading now, when you are reading now to master it, we call it mastery, you're now trying to master that particular topic, you will ensure you understand every question that can come from there. And this means you will go to revision papers, check questions that are coming from that topic. This is the time after reading, you are supposed to even go and try teaching other people. You see, when you teach something, you understand it better. And this is why in Form 4, me together with some other four friends, we took the initiative to teach the syllabus. So I would teach maths and uh, physics, for example, and English. Another friend of mine would take Kiswahili and English. Another one took biology and chemistry. Another one took uh, physics also with me and chemistry. And another one took something else. So we would divide ourselves into uh, different cellar, different subjects and go teach it. This teaching, some people thought we were just helping them, but we were helping ourselves more by teaching it because we did not have teachers, which I usually say was quite a good thing. You know, sometimes when you have a teacher, you want to wait for the teacher. Uh, so let the disadvantage become the advantage. And uh, we managed to finish that. So master how to read. And remember last week we also said you understand yourself. If you are the type who can read for long, long, long? You can read in the morning. You can read. Find your best time to read. If you are the only one who can read, if you are the one who can read only in school and not at home like I used to be because I did not have the conditions at home that enabled me to read, I would take that advantage. So remember to cover the syllabus and read everything that you ought to read. If it is a practical subject, try to do as much as you can. Today, uh, people have uh, internet, YouTube, whatever. If you have access to that, you can go through practicals, uh, how people have done them in the YouTube, go through explanations, ensure you master every topic that you are supposed to master and uh, revise it many times. Now, use of revision questions. You've got to use revision questions to show you which areas you are yet to master. You see, for example, when exam, you're just about to start the exam, mm. you may not get the time to read every section of the book blindly. So, you will read, uh, you will go through exam papers, previous exam papers that you've done before or others that other people have done, similar papers like maybe past KCPE, KCSE papers, depending on which uh, level you are. And then, 
uh, start going through those questions one by one. If you find one that is uh, still giving you trouble, go look for that topic, read it and master it, then come solve that problem. Now, here is another way to use revision questions. If something, for example, in maths, doesn't make sense for you, look for somebody who knows it. Uh, we used to be very good at this in uh, for class 8 and even form 4. Yeah, we had sort of a hierarchy. Uh, you you have a problem with a particular uh, sum, you will go to somebody. If he also has a problem, he will climb higher to somebody. And they would come to me. And mm -hmm. there was only one person ahead of me. If I could not solve, I go to him. If we cannot solve, then we sit together and solve it together. If we could not, then we move to our teacher, who was the head teacher. And he would help us. But then get to know, if I can't solve this, who is it that can mm -hmm. help me solve it? And go solve it together. When it comes to practical subjects like math, the more you do it, the better you become at it. There is no secret about that. So use the revision questions to be able to help you know which areas you're weak in and read them and practice them and master them. If you have access to internet, use YouTube to help you. If you have somebody who can assist you, make use of that. If you have a big brother, I never had a big brother or a big sister who could help me. But if you have somebody who is able to help you in a, a particular area, make use of them. But ensure that you understand uh, how those questions are set. Uh, you are exposed to as many question papers as possible. And you will also be able to master the, the trend. For example, question 1 and 5 maybe comes from this area. They are this short, they are this number of marks. You are trying to familiarize yourself with the revision, with the, with the, the exam itself. And this will give you a lot of confidence. Now, the last uh, part we are just going to do those two tips. The first one is syllabus coverage, where we've talked about establishing the syllabus, uh, complete it, cover it, ensure you revise, and make use of revision questions. Now, Get the timetable for the exams. L right now, people already know KCPE, KCSE timetable. How will it look like? Get to know. And I use this more so when it's now almost time to get started in the exam. And then I plan. The subjects that are coming earlier, I give them emphasis. So I plan with subjects according to how they appear in the timetable. You see, if I'm going to do maths, for example, tomorrow, today I will spend revising uh, that particular maths. If I have two papers, I will not use today to uh, read the, the, the paper for uh, a particular uh, day, which is not any time near. So this one helps you to plan. And the moment you know the timetable, you must come up with your own timetable. That will help you to revise. If you do not take this into consideration, you are likely uh, to lose in your exams. You're likely to fail. They say everyone gets into exam room with a hundred percent but some people lose their marks at a very alarming rate and they go very very down. They are left with very little. So everyone gets in there but they lose. So don't be part of the losers. Put a schedule. That's what I mean by timetable. The revision timetable for yourself. This is not the time to read uh, concepts are fresh because you already read. You're now revising, you're having many revision papers, many past papers just to go through. By the time you're doing, for example, KCC exams, you should have done maybe 10, 20 uh, previous uh, exams just to help you of, of the same caliber, just to help you familiarize yourself with questions. And remember, by the way, some of the questions you're going to meet are one-to-one. -one the same as what had been said before. yeah. So you will be much, much better placed. So put a schedule for your revision. Failing to plan, they say, is planning to fail. This is the way you plan. This day I'm going to read this. This day I'm going to read this. And you've got to be disciplined. Somebody told me, if you can set your own timetable, sit down and set it, and then fail to follow it, then whom should follow it? And whom do you think can follow you? if you cannot even follow yourself. Now, get ready for eventualities. Things can change. And uh, this is why you need to be checking the timetable. Because maybe, I don't know, uh, in KCP, KCSE, it might not have happened. 
but probably it's, it can happen because if you are to start a particular exam and it can delay and maybe they can swap i see this most in the university at one point i had prepared for a particular exam that was to happen the following morning but then somebody comes to my room in the evening and tells me that it's a different paper that is in the morning something that i had planned for the second week and i had not done much preparation so i had to spend a whole night reading and revising and collecting all the papers and by 3 4 a.m. i was ready for it and i chose not to go to sleep because i would oversleep and exam time would pass me so i waited to go sit for that exam the following day at 9 a.m. before i go back to sleep so be ready for eventualities things may change but always uh, keep your eye on the schedule get to know what changes have been made or what adjustments are there uh, but if you look at it the, the timetable and then think that is all it is maybe you looked at something wrong so have that timetable with you look at it be uh, alert in case of any changes so that you're not caught off guard remember those are not excuses you tell somebody that you see this day i had prepared for this particular exam but they changed it such stories don't work stay positive you cannot pass exam if you are panicking don't panic stay jovial remember last time i said you still focus on that result that you want don't focus on anything negative don't focus on possibility of failure focus on your next level focus on the goal focus on the grade that you want and imagine it play it stay positive stay calm yeah let nobody let nothing threaten you because if you've done your part god will do his part but if you haven't done your part no amount of positivity will help you so just like a garden you've got to plant and then you can now pray for the rain because the rain is not in your power but if you haven't planned if you haven't planted your seed if you haven't done the sowing you can't expect much so you so more you re- you reap more you so less you reap less that's the way it is so no amount of cash even if people come to pray for the candidates in your school this will not change much uh, the only thing that can uh, happen is god will keep you to be safe to be, uh, to be healthy on that day and things like that that are beyond your control but what is in your control god doesn't do for us our work we must do our part so that it does its part and that is it so that's where we want to reach for today until next week and uh, uh, we will move on from there as i said uh, we still have what it takes to live your day my name is otino paul peter you can learn more about me from my website otino paul peter and uh, thank you for subscribing and just in case you haven't please remember to subscribe thank you very much have a beautiful time and i always wish you the best in your exam